Hello YouTube, this is Matt Wicks here once again with another new model to review for you to have a look at. Um, this model is a commission model, uh, this is by Model Rail Magazine, produced for them by Backman. Originally it was going to be produced by Dapol, but that changed a few years ago. Uh, this model is of a USA class dock shunter. Uh, this model is MR hyphen 104 which is BR livery in Malachite numbered 30064 which is of course based on the Bluebell Railway hence why I have one. Um, this model was announced back in 2012 I think it was I ordered mine in April and it has just arrived. It's taken a long time to get here and it's taken a long time to be delivered but it's well worth the wait. This model is retailing for £124.99 at the moment through uh, modelrailoffers.co.uk I think it is um, being dispatched by Kerno Model Centre in Cornwall. Um, so let's have a look at the model generally and also we'll go through a little bit of a history and um, just generally the whole model, see how it runs and see how it goes. There are 10 variants of this model available. This one is long sold out, uh, but there are about 10. Uh, one in, another one in Malachite, one in BR Black, uh, National Coal Board Black, uh, Keith and Worth Valley Railway um, Livery, um, LMR, Longmore Military Railway, and a few others as well. Um, Southern Black as well I think is another one but um, they'll all be here by the end of the year hopefully October time and uh, I believe they're processing them as quickly as they possibly can I think they have nearly 4,000 orders or something like that so they'll get there eventually anyway let's get down to a little bit of history on this model and I'll see you in the next bit A little bit of background history on these locomotives now and the prototype itself. Uh, obviously the class in the UK is referred to the USA tanks but also in America where they were built they were known as S100s. So let's have a look. This is all taken from the back of the Backman box. The United States Army Transportation Corps S100s 060Ts was introduced in the early 1942s, a few months after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December 1941. Designed by Colonel Howard G. Hill, some 400 were built by US builders Davenport, Vulcan and Porter and shipped to European and North African theatres of war via Britain. War surplus S-100s, or USA tanks, were spread across Europe and even China. They were so popular in the former Yugoslavia that more were built in the 1950s. The Southern Railway bought 14 for use at Southampton docks, which were to replace the B-4 tank engines. Classified USA, the class itself, they were numbered 30061 to 30074 under BR ownership, modified to suit work at Southampton, where some were later transferred to the departmental fleet. The last were withdrawn in 1967, and four survive. So this loco itself has had quite a long history as well. Um, after Southampton Docks, it then became uh, the Eastley Work Shunter, and in 1964 it was outshopped in Malachite Green livery. Um, and then after that, it's, it's done various rail tours with a sister locomotive as well, um, and it then became, I think it was the last Western Region steam locomotive to be operating. After recently it got transferred to Meldon Quarry, I think it was. Um, 
and there it became the last steam engine working on the western region and then after that it got bought up by a preservation group uh, at the Bluebell Railway which was a southern locomotive uh, group and it has a work fair mainly in the 80s I think uh, I've seen some footage of it around Horsted Canes um, and then after that sadly it's uh, gone out of service and has been painted in various liveries, uh, liveries over the um, over time and I think at the moment it is north of Horsted Keynes in the siding with a bush growing out of it pretty much um, which is quite sad really but uh, these big railways sadly don't have much use for small tank engines hopefully one day we'll see it back out there So what do you actually get in the box of this USA tank? Well you've got the normal paperwork for the warranty etc uh, with the manufacturer and also you get obviously the detailing pack and you can see in here there are various bits and pieces in here some of which I have no idea what they are but uh, you can see some brake rigging there and there are two types of uh, drop plate now that's the plate on the buffer beam. Now it's not fitted on this one um, as it's still in here but you can have one vertical or horizontal uh, so dropped or raised. Um, you also got various uh, steam pipes, vacuum pipes etc. I'm not quite sure what this little uh, black piece is. Uh, not a clue. It might be one of the brackets uh, for the vac pipe. I am not 100% sure on that. Um, but that's what you get in the detailing pack itself. Uh, you also get a very nice uh, paperwork to show you where to oil it and where to attach bits and pieces. It's quite impressive that this model doesn't actually have a flywheel you can see on here. Um, it's just a normal sort of um, Hornby-esque gearbox cover. And the DCC chip actually goes inside, it's a 6 pin which uh, you have to take the body off which I think the screws are underneath the couplings um, I think there's only two screws which hold the body on and also you can see where all the detail bits go, you can see they have a drop plate in a pinkish colour and various pipe works etc you can see how to fit and lubricate and running in the locomotive which I have already done. Okay so let's have a look at this USA tank in a little bit more detail and get a bit closer to it. On the front end the buffer beam, the buffers are not sprung on this particular model. It adds extra cost and there's real no point to it um, unless you like wrapping it into things which is a bit silly. Um, two holes for the uh, steam and probably vacuum pipes. Uh, there are two step ladders either side of the buffers, which you can see on there, which are plastic. And I'd imagine they'll be quite fragile, so be very careful. You can see the lamp irons on the top. There are also two holes either side of the uh, middle uh, lamp iron to fit the drop plate, I think it's called. You can either have it lowered or raised, up to you what you want. And um, also there's quite a lot of detail behind the buffer beam, you can see there are pipes and also uh, nicely moulded is the spring uh, behind the actual coupling hook. You can see plenty of rivet detail on the smoke box as well as nice handrail wire going around uh, the sides and also the front which almost goes around in a complete 360. Uh, there is a nice plate here there's one on either side to aid uh, crew to get onto the loco or on top of the tanks to get to the filler caps. Uh, there's been a lot of questions on forums about what this piece is sticking up here. There's one on the other side as well. It's not the aerial for the uh, radio equipment. It is another, another grab handle if you like just to grab hold of it and pull yourself up onto the top of the tanks. Uh, quite simple, quite straightforward, um, but some people think it's aerials, but the aerial would have been 
mounted on the side of a cab for the radio equipment they would have used in Southampton docks. You can also see another pipe as well coming from the V between the boiler and the tank. Moving around, there's another small step uh, just there uh, to, to aid getting out to the tanks. And also the lubricator is sat just next to that, um, just on top of the cylinder. That would have been driven by the valve gear and motion uh, on the actual side, on this side of the locomotive. The chimney has been nicely modelled as well and it certainly does look and gives the locomotive the right character and look. Moving up to the tanks and the boiler. On top of the tanks you can see it there's a filler cap on either side. On this particular side you can see another rod coming out, either a pipe or a mechanism to operate which I believe is the sanding gear. And I go on to the domes two outer domes, one nearest the cab and one nearest the chimney, I believe is used to store uh, the sand for the sanding gear because it's nice and warm and nice and dry and keeps the sand dry and doesn't uh, uh, go into one massive lump if it gets moist or wet. I believe that's what it's for. Um, and the middle dome, as you can see, is just the standard dome with a whistle and two safety valves in the middle painted in a brass or gold colour. If I swing it around to the other side uh, you can see the two clack valves in the middle here uh, for the boiler and the water feed going into the boiler. There are some bits missing in this area from what I have seen on images and pictures. Uh, if you actually go and see this uh, locomotive at Horsted Canes which is at the north end um, siding uh, just before the bridge uh, you can see on the top here where the brace is between the two tanks there should be two sort of prongs sticking up and another one just behind it which um, hold all the fire iron gear so spades, shovels etc but sadly they're not on this model so not quite sure why but they've been missed out in this particular area which is a bit of a shame uh, but I'm sure somebody can probably do that with a small drill bit and two bits of brass and just to paint them black. Uh, on the front of a cab, you have three nicely glazed windows and some nice lining around the front of the uh, cab as well. You've got the vent on the top of the roof, which is very nice as well. Correctly modelled and nicely looking. Uh, in the cab and the side of the cab, you've got a nicely... Um, printed number on the side 30064 as well as the power classification of I think it's 3F you can see the cab door is nicely lined and there are plenty of grab handles and handrails going up to the cab in the actual cab I'm not sure if you can see it but some of the detail in there is painted regulator handle uh, and the glasses on the boiler as well as some pipe work uh, going up to the top of the boiler, which you can just about see in the middle there. You can see some nice intricate pipework underneath the uh, cab, as well as a nice set of steps, one either side. The brake gear has been nicely modelled behind the step, as you can just about see, and uh, adds every little bit of realism to it, which is very nice. Around the back on the bunker, you can see the bunker is not symmetrical, one is side is larger than the other to add more capacity. You can see the additional lamp irons on the rear, as well as the guards on the back of the windows to stop the windows breaking from either recalling or whatever. On the rear buffer beam, again no sprung buffers, but a couple of holes for the steam, heat and vacuum system or braking system. Moving around, still some nice rivets and again a nice printed plate on the side of the bunker. Moving down a little bit onto the, uh, the wall shirts motion. 
Again, this is very nicely modelled. All metal wheels. You can see the sanding pipes coming down uh, just at the back here. Again, some nice pipe work coming up uh, to the underneath of the tank. But the motion is very nice, very smooth. Uh, all metal from etched metal. And it runs very smoothly and very quietly. Overall, a very nice model. So it's time to see how this model runs. Sadly I have no layout down here, so it's going to have to be on the rolling road.